Hello, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the new version of Contact, version 6.7. Just came out yesterday and it now supports Apple Silicon natively. So I've got Studio One 5.5 here, which is also now supporting native Apple Silicon. So I will load an instance of Contact just to test it and see how it's working. I am really a Cubase person when it comes to a DAW, but Cubase is still running in Rosetta mode. so. At the minute, Studio One Five is looking very appealing to me, and the fact that we're getting or we're starting to get stuff running natively on Apple Silicon is really good as well. So performance hit really, really minimal straight off the bat. If I load up Abbey Road Modern Drummer, go for full Sparkle Kit. This is all, all these libraries are running off of a external NVMe SSD. Let's try just some loops. So yeah, that's all working fine. We'll give, let's try a mode of strings. thing that I've always found with the mode of strings is the way that they cut off. It doesn't really give you much time to go between chords. I'm wondering is there a setting that I can adjust that So there is. Okay. Interesting. India. Another really nice sounding library. Let's try Analog Dreams.
Okay, my ring seems to be working really well. Loading times are really, really fast. It seems stable. Yeah. So not seeing any problems at all. Shake Shimmer Strike, which is uh, basically like a fancy metronome, but I find it really good for when you're sketching out ideas because a regular metronome tends to be very, well, mechanical. But this one you can add a bit of a groove to. You can adjust the swing on it. So yeah, Shake Shimmer Strike is very good for adding just a bit of life to your drums or just as something to jam to when you're sketching out ideas rather than using a the stock metronome, which usually tends to be a bit off-putting for a lot of people. But yeah, really cool to see more native software arriving on the Apple Silicon platform. Next up, I think we're going to get the Plugin Alliance plugins, which I'll definitely check out. That's in March. And then I'm sure a lot of the iLock based stuff is going to go native. Um, I've actually got one here to preview build. So if I check this out as a effect track, if I add Liquid Sonics 7th Heaven Professional, this is now running natively as well sort of like an open beta let's see we'll get this playing back Yeah, so that's running fine too. So yeah, exciting times. If you've got an M1 based Mac and you've been waiting patiently for native versions of stuff and you have contact on a native Apple Silicon DAW, definitely open up your native access and get the latest version of contact going. It'll be really interesting to see more software going native and see what the performance improvements are like. This is only a base model MacBook Air with eight gigabytes. I went for 512 gigabyte of storage over 16 gigabyte of RAM and I haven't had any issues yet. Some people are saying that when things go on the native Apple Silicon, you're looking at a 30 to 40% performance increase, sometimes more depending on how well optimized the code is. Be interested to see what uh, QBS 12 is like as well. I've heard that it's in beta at the minute. 
and it has an M1 native version. So that will be very interesting to see because I'm a Cubius user for a long time. But I've been using Studio One 5.5 on the M1 for the most part just because it's running native and the performance is just so much better. Particularly when I'm screen capturing with OBS, for whatever reason, non-native Apple Silicon DAWs and things like that seem to become quite sluggish and have some slowdown issues. But yeah, when Plugin Alliance release their native versions, I'll be sure to test those out and 100% whenever QVS 12 comes out. As things come out that are supporting Apple Silicon, I will be sure to do videos, testing them out, seeing how they run inside Studio One, or if QBS 12 comes out, testing them out inside that. I'm really interested to see what the performance of QBS 12 is like, especially because they're not using the dongle anymore. They're ditching that for a login based system. So that'll be interesting. Hopefully it's smooth sailing. But yeah, I'll be back with more videos soon. Cheers.